success ratio so far. Good morning, you guys. Good morning. Excuse me. Good morning, you guys. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Uh, my name's Kenny. This guy's name is Lorenzo. We're going to be getting you down to Mineral Bottom and making sure you've got what you need to go out there and have a great trip. A couple things for you right out the gate. One, in, do you have the time? Uh, okay. Yes, it's 824. 8 so we're loaded and ready to go. It's 824. That's all because of all of you. First of all, being modestly packed, um, being very punctual and right on time, we really appreciate that, and being so helpful. If we have to get out of the trailer every time somebody we have to load a water jug and do that back and forth, is a colossal pain in the neck. So thank you very much. You guys are definitely uh, living up to your scout law there. Scout is helpful, so thank you very much. Um, I appreciate that. Um, a few things for you about your trip. Where you're going is really remote. There's no cell phone service out there. So if you don't have a satellite phone, you can't reach the rest of the world. It doesn't matter. You're definitely not missing anything in the rest of the world. However, if somebody gets hurt, that's where things can, uh, that's where problems can arise. Um, do you guys have a sat phone with you or no? You do have a sat phone with you. Okay. So, heaven forbid you should have to con contact the outside world in case of an emergency, but if you do, the number you should reach is on the back of this card. And, and you guys actually have four of these cards, or at least two. I think Lorenzo made them by accident this morning. But on the back of this card, there's a phone number on there, um, and that's the number for Grand County Sheriff's Dispatch. We're very happy to hear from you. Whether it's good or bad news, we're happy to hear from you guys if you're out in the backcountry. However, um, if we're if you if you're on your sat phone because of an emergency, and the emergency I'm talking about is is not well, I twisted my ankle on the hike to Anderson Bottom, and uh, it's kind of puffy, and uh, I'm sunburned, and the bugs are bad. I'm, I'm just not having fun anymore. That's not that's not the number. That's that's not why you call these people. You call these people when you know so and so fell down on a hike and he's bleeding really bad, and we can't get the bleeding to stop. Or so and so fell down and bumped his head, and he won't wake up. That, those are hurry cases, as you know, all right? And so that's why you call Grand County Sheriff's Dispatch. Don't call them to, explain, to complain about your sunburn, all right? Um, but yeah, if you do want to reach out to us and, and give us a call, whatever, let us know. We're not going to run our jet boats up the Green River looking for you, just so you know. That's a, that's a job for the Park Service. Um, uh, but it bears mentioning that those, those kinds of things are, are, can be a thing. The, the Sheriff's Dispatch are the ones that scramble helicopters. And they actually are the ones that coordinate with the Park Service in terms of any serious evacuation. Okay, depending on the gravity of the situation, they will, they will figure that out for you. Now, on the front of this card, there is uh, a date on here, and that's your pickup date. So a little reminder of your pickup date. In addition to that, there's also other days we're running jet boats as well as other days we're going to Mineral Bottom, which is, I think, every day of your trip or nearly every day of your trip. I just, I just wrote down the first two, and I'll explain why next. All right? The reason we give you other days we're running jet boats while you're out there is because if you did have that guy that falls over, falls down on the hike, twists his ankle, and it swells up like a football, he's not having fun anymore, and he wants to come out early, if you've got an adult advisor that wants to come out with that person, we can probably get two of you out. There's no way we'll be able to get all 18 of you out. Um, all 18 of you are almost full jet boat capacity for us already. So, um, so that wouldn't be a feasibility. Um, however, getting you know, your injured party out, as the case may be, we can figure that out. All right? Um, and then, uh, regarding the dates for Mineral Bottom, for the first about 15 miles of your trip, there's an old Jeep trail on River Left uh, as, you're, as you're paddling downstream today and probably part of tomorrow. Um, and that old Jeep trail is at River Level, so heaven forbid you should have a medical thing. But if you did, you could get out on River Left and walk back to the Mineral Bottom Road, and we're going to be getting down there about the same time as when we go by there this morning. So about 10, 10.30, we'll be getting down there. All right? And so who wants these cards? Maybe the gentleman with the sat phone for one. It's your <laughs> SPL. Thank you. Put that with your map. Um, all right. Other stuff for you. So we talked about that stuff. While we're talking about jet boats and the confluence, let's go ahead and talk about um, pickup day. On your pickup day, we ask that you all be packed and ready to go with your boats clean and empty about 10.30 a.m. The card says 11. If you're not ready till 11, that's okay, too. But what we don't want is to pull up down there to pick you up and have you know nine tenths still up or whatever the case might be um, and so not a big deal I'm sure you guys will be I'm sure you guys will be ready to go by the time we get there um, and when, when I say packed and ready to go with your boats clean and empty what I mean is clean on the inside so if you'll take a moment when you pull up at your last pick campsite there or wherever, wherever you want to get picked up um, empty everything out of your canoe inclu including the seat pads any bits of trash put those in a bag let's not leave those in Canyonlands National Park slosh some river water around in each canoe and then stack the canoes on shore upside down. Let's leave the beach at the beach. The canoes are going to be stacked on racks overhead of where you'll be seated on the jet boat. 
Um, so if you got if the boats are full of mud and sand, when we put them on the racks, the mud and sand goes all over you. Makes a big mess. Uh, so please, please, if you'll just if you'll clean our canoes, we'll clean your toilet. What a deal! <laughs> it's a good deal for somebody. <laughs> all right. Other things for you to know about pickup procedure. Um, there, the river has gone up and deposited a lot of sand all over the place, and we're going to talk in more detail about that uh, in just a few minutes. Uh, and then the, now the rivers, both rivers have gone down, so there's big, luxurious sandbars all over the place out there. At the confluence, right on the right, it's a big sandbar, probably 300 yards of sand right there. Okay? Now, um, sleeping on sandbars is awesome. Uh, however, picking people up from sandbars may or may not be. And so with that in mind, wherever you choose to get picked up, Make sure the water is three to four feet deep, about a canoe length from shore. Or in other words, when your boat lands on the sand, if the person in the stern of the boat can stick their paddle in the water and get about three, about three to four feet of paddle wet, it's probably good enough for us. Um, ideally, there should be some fast moving current right in front of the shoreline right there. If you can wade uh, from here to that gray truck over there in shin deep water, that will not work. The boat we're coming to pick you up in is 46 feet long, it's pulled by a semi. There's no way we can get to shore if the water's shin deep for 50 yards, 100 yards. Um, so be really careful about water depth, that's a big deal. If you're planning on hiking, uh, on paddling all the way down to Spanish Bottom to hike in the doll's house, good idea, I recommend that. Um, uh, but those campsites down there don't, uh, the water depth down there is generally pretty fine. I haven't been down there in a while, but I'm sure that the water is fine down there in terms of depth. Um, usually that's not an issue, but particularly right at the, at the confluence, or if you're in that first couple of miles uh, heading down towards Spanish Bottom, uh, the sandbars pop out on both sides of the river, and the, the water depth can be variable. I think we're going to Spanish Bottom, right? Yeah. yeah, we're going yeah. To okay. Bottom. All right. Cool. Good deal. <clears throat> all right. Now, um, other stuff for you. The river went up, came back down again, and there's sand all over the place for camping out there, which is great. However, um, the river has just now come down. It's, it's been up for months and months since March. Um, it's about the Green River's uh, slightly below 4,000, I think, this morning. Um, and it has been as high as over 20 this year. Um, and it's been over 8,000 since March. And so with that in mind, there's some pro there should be some big sandbars out there for camping. Um, however, because the water's been dropping about 1,000 a day for about the last week, um, from your perspective, what that means is those sandbars might still be wet and muddy. They might not be dried out yet. So, we give... Um, each group, high water campsite list. Those campsites exist regardless of water level. Now, a couple things for you to remember. Uh, when the water goes up in the spring, it floods up into the side canyons. When the water goes down, that water up in the side canyons gets hot and stagnant. Guess what that creates? Mosquitoes. Mosquitoes. You got it. Exactly right. So, with that in mind, um, using the campsites on your high water campsite list may or may not be a good idea. Um, the reason why is, if you're camped up in the vegetation at, din at, at dusk, um, there's going to be mosquitoes, for sure. Dinner is served and you're the main course. Um, if you can sleep on a sandbar and you can get out toward the river, out away from the vegetation, uh, I think you'll be met with better success. Um, an, a common mistake that groups make is to set their toilet up in, you know, behind some trees. That way, you know, the, the person going to the bathroom has some privacy. I get that. And I don't blame, I don't blame you. Uh, for that. However, if your toilet's up in the trees but your campsite's out in the out on the sand, uh, you know, when you go to sit down on the toilet, uh, it's, you're going to give some blood, I think, to the mosquitoes. So you might be, be concerned about that. Other things for you, if you're sleeping on sandbars, make sure that before you go to bed at night, from the surface of the water to where all your gear is, there's about three vertical feet of, of elevation there. So in other words, if your sandbar is big, but it's long and gradual, make sure that you have lots of space uh, for the water to rise. It is, we're coming into monsoon season, and what that means is uh, you'll likely start getting evening showers, like late afternoon, uh, possible thunderstorms. Some of those can deliver quite a bit of rain. Um, and so you could see some uh, fluctuation in river level. Uh, also, there's dams upstream, and we have no idea of knowing what those folks are doing with the water level up there. And so with that in mind, um, always make sure you're camped. All of your equipment, all of your boats, everything is about three feet above the surface of the water before you go to bed at night. I would also have all your boats all the way out of the water tied to a stationary object, not your SPL's big toe. Uh, flip them over upside down, tie them to each other, and then tie them to two or three water jugs, for example. That'd be a great idea. Or better yet, a tree. All right. Let's see here. Other stuff for you to know. So have you all traveled in the Canyonlands before? 